Good day everyone, I'm Sergeant Leo Silabas Jr., Philippine Army Reserve from 105 Community Defense Center, First Regional Community Defense Group. I am from Zone 2, Number 45, Barangay Ramago, Rosales, Pangasinan. I am 21 years old. I was born on June 2, 1999 in Barangay Ramago, Rosales, Pangasinan. I graduated Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in Filipino at Pangasinan State University. I graduated Advanced ROTC at Pangasinan State University, Ordinate ROTC Unit. I also passed my licensure examination for teachers last September 29, 2019. Again, this is my profile. Now let's have our classroom instruction. Una, kapag nais niyong pumunta sa palikuran, ay dumiretso na lamang kayo upang hindi makaabala sa ating tinatalakay. Pangalawa, kapag nagkaroon ng lindol, you must drop, cover, and hold on upang hindi matamaan ng kahit na anumang matigas na bagay ang ating ulo o anumang parte ng katawan. Pangatlo, kapag nagkaroon ng sunog, you must get out and stay out. Go to your safe meeting place. Our topic for today is all about the weapons training. Now let's have the scope. The first one is the general characteristics of M16. Second is the troubleshooting and corrective action. Third is ammunition types and characteristics. Fourth is cycles of operation. Fifth is modes of fire. And the sixth is assembly in this assembly of M16. Seventh is the marksmanship. Eighth is the firing position. And then the last one is the zeroing procedure. Now let's have the general characteristics of M16. General characteristics of the M16. Serious weapons. First is lightweight. Second is air-cooled, third is magazine-fed, fourth is shoulder or hip weapon, fifth is gas-operated, and the last one is automatic and semi-automatic. Other characteristics of M16, without magazine and sling is 6.35 pounds, 20-round magazine is 6.75 pounds, with 30-round magazine is 7.06 pounds, the bayonet knife is 1.50 pounds, scabbard is 0.30 pounds, sling M1 is 0.40 pounds. The rifle with bayonet knife is 44.25 inches, overall rifle length is 30 inches, but stock close, it is not applicable. Operational characteristics, barrel rifling hand, one twist in 9 inches is 12, muzzle velocity, fire per second is 3,250, cyclic rate of fire, rounds per minute is 700 to 800, maximum effect rate of fire, semi-automatic, rounds per minute is 45 to 90, burst, 3 round burst, rounds per minute, not applicable. Automatic rounds per minute is 150 to 200. Sustained rounds per minute is 12 to 15. Maximum range is 2,653 meters. Point target is 460 meters. Area target is not applicable. Next is the troubleshooting and corrective action. Malfunction or troubleshooting, it is a failure of a weapon to function normally and one common form of malfunction or troubleshooting is stoppage. Stoppage is a failure of automatic or semi-automatic firearms to complete the cycle of operation. Corrective action, immediate action for stoppage. When the rifle fails to operate, you must attempt to clear it as soon as possible and do this by applying immediate action. Immediate is recognized by using the acronym SPORTS. S, 
slap bottom of magazine to make sure it is properly seated. P. Pull charging handle all the way to the rear. O. Observe ejection of case or cartridge. Eyeball chamber and check for obstruction. R. Release the charging handle to feed new round. Don't ride the charging handle. Dapat kapag ikakasa ay bibitawan ito ng biglaan. T. Tap the forward assist. Then the S. Shoots. If it won't fire, look for trouble and apply remedial action. Kapag ginamit na ang rifle at hindi pa rin ito gumagana, you must check again for jump cartridge case in the chamber. If a cartridge case is in the chamber, tap it out with a cleaning rod. Pagkatapos ay muling gamitin, kapag ito ay hindi pa rin gumagana or it still fails to fire, you may have a mechanical failure. If it has a mechanical failure, you must correct a mechanical malfunction. You must first clear the rifle, then disassemble the rifle, then inspect for dirty, corroded, missing or broken parts. If it has a dirty or corroded parts, you must clean it. Then if you are finished replacing missing or broken parts or cleaning dirty or corroded parts, you must assemble the rifle. Then you must perform a function check, load the rifle and then fire the rifle. Remedial action is a continuing effort to determine the cause of stoppages or malfunctions and to try to clear the stoppage once it had been identified. Now let's have the ammunition types and characteristics. Cartridge 5.56mm, ball, M193. The M193 cartridge is a center fire cartridge with a 55 grain gilded metal jacketed lead alloy core bullet the m193 round is the standard cartridge for field use with the m16a1 rifle and has no identifying marks next is cartridge 5.56 millimeter tracer m196 used in the m16a1 rifle the m196 cartridge has a red or orange painted tip its main uses are for observation of fire, incendiary effect, and signaling. Soldiers should avoid long-term use of 100% tracer rounds, which could cause deposits of incendiary material or chemical compounds that could damage the barrel. Therefore, when tracer rounds are fired, they are mixed with ball ammunition in a ratio of no greater than 1 to 1 with a preferred ratio of 3 or 4 ball rounds to 1 tracer round. Next is cartridge 5.56mm dummy M199 used in all rifles. The M199 dummy cartridge is used during dry firing and other training. This cartridge can be identified by the 6 grooves along the sides of the case beginning about one half inch from its tip it contains no propellant or primer the primer well is open to prevent damage to the firing pin next is cartridge 5.56 millimeter blank m200 used in all rifles the m200 blank cartridge has no projectile the case mount is closed with a seven petal rosette crimp and shows a violet tip. Cartridge 5.56 mm ball M855 used in the M16A2, 3, and 4, and M4 series weapons. The M855 cartridge has a 62 grain gilded metal jacketed lead alloy core bullet with a steel penetrator. The primer and case are waterproof. This round is also linked and used in the M249, it has a green tip. This ammunition should not be used in the M16A1 except under emergency conditions and only at target less than 90 meters in distance. 
the twist of the M16A1 rifling is not sufficient to stabilize the projectile of the heavier ammunition. Next is the cartridge 5.56mm tracer M856 used in the M16A2, 3 and 4 and M4 series weapons. The M856 tracer cartridge has a characteristic similar to the M196 tracer with a slightly longer tracer burnout distance. This cartridge has a 63.7 grain bullet. The M856 does not have a steel penetrator. It has a red tip, orange when linked 4 to 1 for the M249. This ammunition should not be used in M16A1 except under emergency conditions and only at target less than 90 meters in distance. The twist of the M16A1 rifling is not sufficient to stabilize the projectile of the heavier ammunition. Next is cartridge 5.56 mm short range training ammunition or SRTA M862 used in all rifles. The M862 SRTA is designed exclusively for training. It can be used in lieu of service ammunition on indoor ranges and by units that have a limited range fan that does not allow the firing of service ammunition. SRTA ammunition must be used with the M2 training bolt. Although SRTA closely replicates the trajectory and characteristics of service ammunition out to 25 meters. It should not be used to set battle site zero of weapons to fire service ammunition. The settings that are placed on the sites for SRTA could be different for service ammunition. If adequate range facilities are not available for sustainment training, SRTA can be used for any firing exercise of 25 meters or less. This includes the 25 meter skilled silhouette, 25 meter alternate qualification course, and quick fire training. SRTA can also be used for urban operations training. Next is the cycles of operation. The soldier must understand the rifle components in the mechanical sequence of events during the firing cycle. The eight cycles of functioning, feeding, chambering, locking, firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, and cocking begin after the loaded magazine has been inserted in the weapon. Feeding, the forward movement of the bolt, stripping the top round from the magazine and moving it toward the chamber. As the bolt carrier group moves rearward, it engages the buffer assembly and compresses the action spring into the lower receiver extension. When the bolt carrier group clears the top of the magazine, the expansion of the magazine spring forces the follower in a new round up into the path of the forward movement of the bolt. The expansion of the action spring sends the buffer assembly and bolt carrier group forward with enough force to strip a new round from the magazine. Next is chambering, refers to fully seating the round in chamber. As the bolt carrier group continues to move forward, the face of the bolt thrusts the new round into the chamber. At the same time, the extractor claw grips the rim of the cartridge and the ejector is compressed. Next is locking. The step in the cycle of operation that is a counterclockwise rotation of the bolt securing it into the barrel locking lugs. As the bolt carrier group moves forward, the bolt is kept in its most forward position by the bolt cam pin riding in the guide channel in the upper receiver. 
Just before the bolt locking lugs make contact with the barrel extension, the bolt cam pin emerges from the guide channel. The pressure exerted by the contact of the bolt locking lugs in barrel extension causes the bolt cam pin to move along the cam track. Then rotating the bolt locking lugs in line behind the barrel extension locking lugs, the rifle is ready to fire. Next is firing, refers to pulling the trigger, releasing the hammer to strike the firing pin, which strikes the primer. The primer ignites and, in turn, ignites the powder charge within the cartridge care. Unlocking refers to the clockwise rotation of the bolt after firing, freeing the bolt from the barrel locking lugs. Next is extracting the steps in the cycle of operation that pulls the round from the chamber. The bolt carrier group continues to move to the rear. The extractor, which is attached to the bolt, grips the rim of the cartridge case, holds it firmly against the face of the bolt, and withdraws the cartridge case from the chamber. Next is ejecting, the step in the cycle of operation that removes the expended cartridge from the weapon out of the ejection port. With the base of cartridge case firmly against the face of the bolt, the ejector and ejector spring are compressed into the bolt body. As the rearward movement of the bolt carrier group allows the nose of the cartridge case to clear the front of the ejection port. The cartridge is pushed out by the action of the ejector and spring. Next is cocking, refers to the rearward movement of the bolt riding over the hammer, resetting the weapon for subsequent firing. The rearward movement of the bolt carrier overrides the hammer forcing it down into the receiver and compressing the hammer spring, cocking the hammer in the firing position. The action of the rifle is much faster than the human reaction. Therefore, the fire cannot release the trigger fast enough to prevent multiple firing. That is the cycles of operation. Upang mas maintindihan natin ang cycles of operation ay panoorin natin ang video na aking inihanda. Cocking occurs as the hammer is reset. Feeding occurs as the round is stripped from the magazine by the bolt. Chambering occurs as the round is pushed into the chamber by the bolt. Locking occurs as the locking lugs on the bolt align with the lugs on the barrel extension. Firing occurs as the propellant ignites within the cartridge case, forcing the projectile out of the barrel. Unlocking occurs as the bolt rotates until the locking lugs no longer align with the lugs on the barrel extension. Extracting occurs as the cartridge case is withdrawn from the chamber by the extractor claw. Ejecting occurs as the cartridge case is expulsed by the ejector and spring. Cocking occurs as the hammer is reset. Next is the modes of fire. The M16 rifles function in either the semi-automatic or automatic mode. Semi-automatic fire mode, M16 or M4 series. The disconnector is a mechanism installed so the firer can fire single rounds. It is attached to the trigger and rotated forward by action of the disconnector spring. When the recoil of the bolt carrier cocks the hammer, the disconnector engages the lower hook of the hammer and holds it until the trigger is released. The disconnector rotates to the rear and down, disengaging the hammer and allowing it to rotate forward until caught by the nose of the trigger. This prevents the hammer from following the bolt carrier forward and causing multiple firing. The trigger must be squeezed again before the next round will fire. 
Dito sa semi-automatic fire mode, every pag-squeeze ng trigger ay isang bala lang ang nilalabas. Automatic fire mode, M16A3 rifle, M4A1 carbine only. When the selector lever is set on the auto position, the rifle continues to fire as long as the trigger is held back and ammunition is in the magazine. The functioning of certain parts of the rifle changes when firing automatically. Dito sa automatic fire mode, hanggat hindi binibitawan ng tao ang trigger ay tuloy-tuloy lang ang paglabas ng bala. Dito sa modes of fire, manood muna tayo ng video upang mas maintindihan kung ano ang modes of fire or ang semi-automatic fire mode at ang automatic fire mode. Start with semi-auto. Okay. And then we'll go to full auto. Okay, I'll do two or three rounds of semi, and then we'll go to full auto. Okay, rifle is safe, so I'm going to load. And we're going to fire a couple of rounds semi-auto. Now that was one trigger pull, one shot. Correct? One trigger pull, here you go, one more time. One round, release, one round, release, as you can see it's firing once. I can hold it down and it won't fire again until I let it off and pull it again. Now we'll do auto. That was one trigger pull, right Aaron? One trigger pull for the rest of it. And that's the difference in semi-auto and, and full, full auto. auto. Next is the assembly and disassembly of M16. So now we must disassemble the M16 rifle. Start with selector on safe. The first one is remove the magazine. Second, open bolt and eyeball chamber. Third, Remove hand guards. And then fourth, 5 volt upper receiver from lower receiver. You must push it so that you can remove it. And then pull back charging handle and bolt carrier. And then next, 6 is remove bolt carrier and bolt. 7. Remove charging handle. 8. Remove firing pin. Retaining pin. 9. Put bolt assembly in lock position. And then 10. Remove firing pin. True rear bolt carrier. 11. Remove bolt cam pin. 12. Remove bolt assembly from carrier. And then next 13, remove extractor pin. Use the firing pin to remove the extractor pin. And then 14, remove extractor and spring. And then next is remove sling. Next, push receiver pivot pin. And then 17, Separate upper and lower receivers. 18. Press in buffer. Depress retainer and release buffer. And then 19. Remove buffer and spring. And then next is the assembly. First, we must insert buffer and spring. Second, Join upper and lower receivers. Third, engage receiver pivot pin. Fourth, put on hand guards. Fifth, snap on sling. Sixth, insert extractor and spring. Seven, push in extractor pin. Eight, slide bolt into carrier. Nine, Put in both cam pin. 
tenth, drop in and sit. Eleven, pull bolt. Twelve, put in pin. Thirteen, hook in, then push charging handle part away. Fourteen, slide in bolt carrier. Fifteen, shove in charging handle and bolt carrier together. And then sixteen, push in take down pin. Bago tayo magpatuloy ay manood muna ulit tayo ng video. Next is marksmanship. Marksmanship describes a person's ability to shoot a firearm accurately. For the marksmanship, panoorin muna natin ang video ng mga manonood lang mula sa Camp Odunel, Kapas, Tarlac. Champions, target is to be the finest marksman. At the Marksman Training Center, this is the mindset of every soldier. The Philippine Army is home to the best shooters who have distinguished themselves not only in local competitions, but in international competitions as well. At the Marksman Training Center in Camp O'Donnell, Kapas Tarlac, members of the Philippine Army don't just become sharpshooters. They are home to become world-class marksmen. So, yung magiging part ng Malunod Bla, uh, of course, uh, maging shooter ka. Tapos, uh, meron din nga, uh, ang pwede lang magsuot dito, as per instruction, yung naka-abroad. Isa ka na sa nakuha sa elimination round at ikaw ang magre-represent dito nga sa ASEAN Army Rifle Mate. Captain Jose Carlos Coruña is one of the trainees yearning for this badge. Their marksmanship skills are enhanced by joining various shooting competitions here and abroad. To be able to earn the Manonuda patch, you have to undergo the basic marksmanship training, advanced marksmanship training, and you need to be able to pass the marksmanship trainers training courses for both pistol and rifle. And then you must be able to represent the country in any international shooting tournament for you to be able to wear the Manonuda. The Philippine Army shooting team has won the most coveted trophy in the 2014 Australian Army Skills at Arms Meeting. Their team has defeated the best shooters from the armed forces of the United States and 12 other countries. Uh, ngayon, ang sinasalian ngayon ng team dito is yung tinatawag na ASAM, BISAM, at saka yung ARM, Army ASEAN Rifle Mix. Yung ASAM ang sumasali doon, mga first world country. Nag-world champion na tayo doon. Natalo natin yung Amerika, British, Canada. So, yun ang nagpatunay na world class 
na rin itong team nito. The ASM is an annual shooting competition among different units of the Australian Army aimed to showcase the marksmanship of participating teams. It also serves as a venue to exchange techniques and learn from each other. The Army team won 14 gold medals, 50 silver medals, and two bronze medals in the team matches. Sa aming pagsali sa mga competition is napakalaking bagay na pinanghawakan namin ng karangalan ng ating bansa, hindi lang sa aming sarili, sa aming, sa aming unit, kundi sa buong bandila ng Pilipinas. Well, not, not to be biased, but uh, in the latest PNP AFP Olympics, that saw the participation of the Philippine National Police, the three major services, the Philippine Army Shooting Team emerged as the champions, and it is the Philippine Army Shooting Team that represents the country in international tournaments. So I am proud to say that the Marksmanship Training Center is the premier marksmanship training center of the armed forces of the Philippines. Philippine Army team proved its very high level of marksmanship, making it equal to the other armies not only in the ASEAN region, but also in the whole world. At the Southeast Asian picture, uh, our toughest uh, our toughest uh, opponents would have to be Indonesia and Thailand. And, well, of course, because of our training and our equipage, um, I would say that we are just at par. There's just a slight edge to equipment and, of course, ammunition. But training-wise, we have world-class training. We do not fall far from first, second, and third place. We, we get first, second, or third sometimes, but hindi po tayo bumabagsak din sa top That's how good your Philippine Army shooting team is. Up next, what it takes to be an elite marksman. The Philippine Army implements various training programs to further enhance the shooting skills of each soldier. May kanya-kanyang team dito, katulad ng uh, pistol team, uh, men and ladies. Tapos mayroong uh, carbine team, yun yung tinatawag na basic. Carbine, mayroong yung rifle, tapos mayroong masigilan. Tapos sa stages, may kanya-kanyang stages naman. Uh, 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 pistol, rifle, carbine, iba-ibang klaseng discipline. Going through the marksmanship training is like taking a college degree. Four years bago magiging competitive, uh, lahat ng klase ng competition. So, ganun na nga, yung pagpunta sila dito, nagre-recruit kami ng potential shooter. At dito iti-train. Leaders of the training are like snipers too when it comes to selecting target members. Sa ngayon, meron kaming uh, mobile training team. Uh, umiikot silang nagtuturo. At isa yun sa pamamaraan na makakuha ng mga uh, potential shooter na pwedeng maging magaling na shooter. Challenge is their everyday ordeal. Yung una, yung sinabi mong gaano ka rigid. Oh my God. Advantage sa disadvantage. Nandito na unang-una. Maghapon kasi na training ko. So, kaya kung rigid, talagang rigid kasi araw-araw. Sa MTC po, your, your marksmanship training center soldiers start their day with their exercises, their calisthenics that starts at around 4.30. We run an average of about 5 to 7 kilometers a day. And then we have our uh, conditioning drills, we have our um, planking exercises to strengthen our core because shooting is a discipline of muscle controls. One should load his gun with bullets of determination, passion, and discipline. Iba ito kasi kumbaga ito na yung trabaho namin. We teach, then we shoot. We act as instructor, we shoot national one or international. So, exciting. Nakatulong kami sa kapasundalo, lalo yung mga, yung mga bagong pumapasok ng sundaluhan. Compared to other marksmanship training, scenario-based shooting application are conducted in the training field. While the IPSIC and IDPA are tournaments of speed and accuracy on regularly occurring scenarios, the A-Arm, the Southeast Asian Rifle Meet, and the Australian Army Skill of Arms Meet are more tests of how soldiers really fight in the field. Yeah, the mga distances po namin are 300, 400 meters plus. The IDPA, the farthest would be about 50 meters. Lady Cadet Leia shifted from arrows to bullets. Dati po kasi akong archery, archer. Ngayon, sa tingin ko, walang pinagkaiba yung pagiging archer sa shooting. Kaya, trinay ko siya. E, eh, nag-enjoy naman po ako hanggang yung skills ko parang uh, na-develop na siya. 
hanggang sa yun, sumasay, sinasali na kami. Uh, pag may elimination, nakakapasa. Pag nakapasa ka sa elimination, automatic, uh, mag-shoot ka ng abroad for competition. Dito po kasi, kailangan ng patience. Dapat willing ka. Uh, nandun din yung skills. She too desires to be a top-notch shooter like the rest of the team. Sa akin kasi, uh, sumasali ako sa practical para makakuha ng uh, self-confidence ko para sa laban ko ng abroad. Ang pinakamahalaga is self-confidence and exposure. Anyone with perseverance can be an elite shooter. Sabi nga, medyo mahirap siguro, pero sabi nga nila, kung gusto, maraming paraan. Kung ayaw, maraming dahilan. So, pupunta tayo ngayon sa paraan kung yung mga sundalo na gusto pupunta rito, it's just a matter to, to coordinate the commander na gusto nilang pumunta rito. Merong mga coordinations na gano'n eh. O kaya kung interesado sila, kahit hindi siguro sila magaling sa shooting uh, sa lahat ng mga sundalo. Gumawa kayo ng paraan kung paano kayo mapunta rito, gusto nyo pumunta dito, gusto nyo mag-training. It's just a matter sa mga kanilang mga commanders, mapupunta naman sila dito. We encourage you to be part of the Philippine Army shooting team. We would like everyone to signify their intent to join the unit, the center. Not only will it validate your skills as an individual soldier, but more importantly, it will give you the opportunity to represent your country in ways that the ordinary soldier can. So, for all of you who are interested, please don't be afraid to contact the Assistant Chief of Staff or Personnel of the Training Doctrine Command and signify your intent. You are more than, we are, we are going to be more than happy to welcome you to the center. Now let's have the firing position. Standing, with no support other than muscle strength, this is the most difficult position for accurate shooting. It is the least effective for long distances and should only be used for short range shots. With neither arm supported, this is the most difficult position for firing an accurate shot rather than trying to hold the barrel steady, which is impossible. Try to keep movement of the barrel to as small an area as possible. Smooth, natural motion will produce the best shot. Seating. In the seating position, both arms are supported. The same care should be taken to avoid elbow to knee cup contact. You can sit with your legs apart or crossed. You can also wrap your arm around your knee and rest the force stuck on the muscle of your bent arm. Both arms are supported by legs. Next to the prone position, this is the steadiest position. Next is kneeling. For the kneeling position, the rear knee is placed on the ground. The other leg supports the elbow of the forward arm. The elbow should not be placed on the kneecap, bone to bone, as this will cause you the wobble. The elbow should be placed on muscle. Usually, the quadriceps. Many hunters use this position in waist-high cover. With only one arm braced, the kneeling position is less steady than the prone and seating position. Then next is the prone. The prone position is the most accurate of the four. However, the low angle may limit your view of the target if there is tall grass or brush in between. It also takes more time than the other positions to assume. Pay special attention to the muzzle of your rifle as there is greater risk that it will contact the ground and may become lodged with dirt or mud. Do not attempt to stand while holding the rifle because rising 
place it on the ground stand, then pick up the rifle. Again, paying special attention to the muzzle. The prone position is the steadiest of the four positions because it's the easiest to hold. It's the best position for mastering the fundamentals of firing, aiming, breathe, control, trigger squeeze, and follow through. Then, next is the zeroing procedure. M16 rifle, if necessary, the soldier should battle sight zero the weapon as follows. Adjust the elevation knob counterclockwise as viewed from above until the rear sight assembly rests flush with the carrying handle and the 8 third marking is aligned with the index line on the left side of the carrying handle. Then adjust the elevation knob one more click clockwise. Position the apertures. So the unmarked aperture is up and the 0 to 200 meter aperture is down. Rotate the windage knob to align the index mark on the 0 to 200 meter aperture with the long center index line on the rear side assembly. Again, in zeroing procedure, let's watch another video. Well, I've purchased an AR platform firearm. How do I sight it in? Well, that's what we're going to discuss today in this video. And it's not that hard. The problem is, is that nobody likes to explain this stuff. So let's get down to it. Down to it. You've bought your AR style platform firearm, and now you're wondering how to sight it in so you can hit those targets out on the range. Well, the first thing that we need to do is go over some of the basic characteristics of the AR platform. Now we're going to be looking at my Stag Arms Model 2 5.56 AR-15. Now it's a semi-automatic firearm, but a lot of the features are similar to other AR platforms out there on the market. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look on how we can look at the characteristics and then move on on how to set up your firearm for what is called a mechanical zero so you can start the process to zero your firearm. Now this is my Stag Arms Model 2 5.56 AR rig. Now there's a lot of companies that make similar firearms, but the characteristics are basically the same. So let's just go over a quick rundown of what they are. Here we have the muzzle, the barrel, and then we have the front sight, the forend, and then this top part here is called the upper assembly, which includes all those other items. And then we have a lower assembly, which includes our magazine well, our trigger and trigger assembly group, and then, of course, our grip. Then last but not least, there's the stock that has the buffer tube and buffer spring. And we'll go over some of those finer details later in another video. But what we're primarily concerned with is the front sight, which adjusts our elevation or up and down of where our rounds are going to go on the target, and then, of course, the rear sight back here, which will adjust the left and right, or the windage, of our rounds. Now let's take a look at our front sight in a little bit more detail. As we take a closer look at the front sight system, we'll see that there is a wing on the left and on the right, and in the center is a front sight post. You'll also notice that there is a small little circle there, and that's a detent that we're going to have to push to rotate that front sight post either up or down. Now, in case you're wondering which direction to go, you'll notice that there is an arrow with the word up. That's included on most AR platform style of firearms. So what we'll have to do is get like a nail, depress that little indent, and then we can rotate that front sight either up or down one click at a time. That's something we'll do a little bit later on. Now, here's the rear sight. And the rear sight is responsible for the windage, or the left or right, of where our rounds are going to impact the target. 
Now on this model it has a 6 slash 3, so we're going to leave it in this position according to that line there with that notch. Some other AR platforms have an 8 slash 3. Now if you're going to zero that type of platform, you're going to need to rotate this knob forward one click. Now let's get a closer look at the rear sight. Now on our rear sight, we have a thing called apertures. Now this is the large aperture here, and then we also have a small aperture. Now the small aperture is used for long distance or daytime shooting. The large open aperture is used for low light conditions or when we're zeroing. We also have a knob over here that we're going to make our adjustments either left or right. Now here's the knob that we're going to use to adjust our windage or our left or right. And as you can see, there's an arrow with an R to indicate that if we rotate this in a clockwise position, one click at a time, it will adjust our windage to the right. Likewise, if we went the opposite direction and counterclockwise, that would take it to the left one click at a time. Now remember, we're going to use both the front and the rear sight and adjust those accordingly so we can put our rounds on target. So now that we've looked at the front sight system, and we know that that adjusts the height or the elevation, and the rear sight adjusts the left or the right of our sight, what we're going to do now is set our AR platform is what is called a mechanical zero. Now for the front sight, we're going to use a common household nail to help us adjust that front sight post. And what we want to end up doing is make sure that this front sight post area here is flush with this area here. That'll help us get our mechanical zero. Now it's a little tricky, but what you're going to have to end up doing is pressing down that little knob and then rotate that front sight towards the counterclockwise position. and keep rotating until you get it all the way up flush with this area up here. Now one more turn and it should be good to go. Now to set our rear sight to a mechanical zero, there's a few things that we need to do. We won't need a nail, but we do need to look and see that there's little hash marks along this bottom edge here. And we also have one in the center. That indicates the center of the left and right windage. Now, what we'll look here on this O2 aperture, which is our largest aperture, you'll also notice that there is a little line inscribed along that aperture. What we want is that line to marry up with the center mark down here. Now, as you'll notice, it's a little bit off, so what we're going to do is adjust that knob a little bit to the right or the left, so those two lines meet. That looks good about there. Now if your AR rig doesn't have these hash marks down here on the bottom, you're going to have to go old school. Now that means that you're going to have to take this aperture knob, the windage knob, and you're going to have to adjust it so that these apertures go all the way to the left hand side. Then what you'll do is count the number of clicks until it goes all the way to the right side. Then you'll divide that by two, and that'll give you your center point for your rear sight. So now that our rear sight is set to the proper position, we want to return it back to that large O2 aperture. Now that we've made adjustments to the front of the rear sight for our mechanical zero, we're going to need a target to shoot at. Now normally, these types of AR platforms are zeroed for 300 meter targets. Now there's not a lot of ranges that have that much space, so what the military did was make a smaller target like we see here with a small silhouette that we can use at the 25 meter mark and still get a good zero and be able to engage targets at that 300 meter mark. Now, as you'll notice, what we're going to do is get a close-up of this target and I'll explain it a little bit more. Here is the M16 A2 25 meter zeroing target. Now this is the same target we're going to use to zero in or sight our AR platform. Now while this target looks confusing and a little bit complicated, it isn't. Because today we're going to show you how to read the target and make the necessary adjustments to your AR platform so that you can hit targets at 300 meters out. 
Now in step number one, you're going to fire three rounds and you're going to aim center mass of the black silhouette. Now this will be your first shot group. It should be a tight group, but it probably won't be in the circle center mass, but don't worry. Go ahead and mark this group on your target. In step number two, we're going to take the center of that first group and count the number of boxes vertically and horizontally it will take to move that group to the target center mass. In this example, we would move it five squares to the right and six squares down so you can hit center mass. In step number four, now you're going to make adjustments to your AR, the front side for elevation and the rear side for windage. The key to remember is that for every one box on the target will equal one click on that appropriate device. So as we saw here, we would go five right and six down. Now after we've made those adjustments in step five, we're going to fire three more rounds. And this will be our second shot group. And as we can see, not all three rounds are dead center on the target. So we would repeat steps two through four listed here. Now in this example, we would go down in elevation two boxes or two clicks on the front sight. Now once we've done that, we'll go to step six and we'll fire a third group to verify that the AR is now sighted for 300 meter targets. Now if that third and final group in all three rounds are dead center, then we probably need to shoot another group, a fourth group, to verify that our AR platform is sighted correctly. Now you might be asking, well what if it takes me more than nine rounds to verify the zero? Well that's okay. When I was in the United States Army, they gave us up to 18 rounds to zero our AR platform. If you don't, and it takes longer, you need to concentrate on the basic shooting fundamentals and go from there. Anyway, this is how you use the M16A2 25 meter zeroing target to sight in your AR platform. In the Army, each soldier had to zero his or her firearm within 18 shots or less. They did this by getting five out of six rounds in two consecutive shot groups within the four centimeter circle to ensure they had a good zero. I suggest the same standards when you zero your AR platform. So there it is. We went through the steps and some of the basic characteristics of your AR platform. We also showed you how to use your front side post, which adjusts the elevation or the up and down, and then the windage of the rear side that adjusts the left and right. And we're able to set this up into a condition known as a mechanical zero. Now that's going to be our starting point when we go out onto the range and actually fire rounds and make adjustments to the front and the rear sights so our point of aim and point of impact are the same. Now remember, this is a zero that will set our firearm, or our rig, to be able to hit targets at the 300 meter mark. So anyway, I hope this helps, and the next stop is going to the range. So take care, and God bless. Peace. Now let's have the summary. We have tackled what is all about the general characteristics of M16. Second is the troubleshooting and corrective action. Third, ammunition types and characteristics. Fourth, cycles of operation. Fifth, modes of fire. Sixth, assembly and disassembly of M16. Seventh, marksmanship. Eighth, firing position and then the last one is the zeroing procedure now for your assignment list down what you learned in one general characteristics of m16 for five points two troubleshooting and corrective action five points number three ammunition types and characteristics for five points and then number four, cycles of operation, five points. And then number five, modes of fire for five points. Number six, assembly and disassembly of M16, five points. Marksmanship, five points. 
8. Firing position, 5 points. And then the last one, number 9, zeroing procedure, 5 points. If you want to ask a question, feel free to message me. That's all for today. Thank you and good day.